Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. The first thing for us to do for this episode is to announce the winner of our Christmas giveaway, and that winner is Bandit B86. Okay, so Bandit B86, you have won yourself a $25 Reaper gift certificate that you can use at the online Reaper store. And what I'll need you to do is send an email to me at reapertv at tx.rr.com, and we'll hook you up. If dollars is not your native currency, then we can also take care of you in an equivalent amount of pounds, euro, or Australian dollars. So congratulations to Bandit B86. I'll need you to get a hold of me by the 15th of December. If not, then I'll draw the name of another Reaper Minis TV subscriber at random, and they'll be our Christmas giveaway winner. And thanks to everybody who's watching Reaper Minis TV. We'll have more giveaways to come, but right now let's get to some reviews. We're starting off with a whole slew of chronoscope reviews, and appropriately enough, starting off with Santa Claus. This is a single piece miniature of the jolly old fat man. He's wearing the typical Santa Claus outfit, the hat, the coat, the mittens, the boots. He's got a teddy bear that he's holding in his right hand, and also has a large bag of toys, pretty much stuffed to the max in his left hand, and it's got toys that are overflowing out of it. Uh, good sculpt, didn't need really any cleaning at all. I'm not really sure what I'd use it for. I've had a, an idea kicking around for a sort of Christmas-themed Call of Cthulhu adventure that he might fit in. So for me, that's where he might end up. For you, maybe in a diorama or something similar. Next up is Chan Lee, a martial arts master, very Bruce Lee kind of figure if you ask me. It's a single piece miniature and he did need some cleaning. You can see the mold lines that ran across the, the sides of his chest and also down the arms a little bit, but nothing that was too bad. He's in a pose where he's kind of getting up on his tiptoes that looks like he's about to strike out at somebody or really ready to punch somebody if they come near him. It's a decent enough sculpt and the muscle definition was fine but I just really don't have a use for the figure. So if you need a Bruce Lee-ish martial arts master, then your figure's here. Or he might work in a superhero game where you have a martial arts superhero or supervillain, but the figure looks pretty mundane. And I don't mean mundane in a bad way, I just mean not super heroic. So second thought, it might not be great in that type of game. But now that I'm thinking about it some more, I think he'd work fine in a game of Feng Shui, either as a player character or as a main boss bad guy or named bad guy if you're playing Feng Shui that you could use in that game. So for that, I think he'd be real good. Next up is Terrell. He's a zombie survivor and continuing on the line that was started in Zombieland and Reaper has picked up on it with their zombie survivors. The characters are named from the city that they originated from, so he is from Terrell, Texas. Terrell is a single piece miniature. He's got a pistol in his left hand and a tonfa in his right hand and he's in a pose where he's shooting straight ahead and also at the ready with the tonfa to smack anybody that comes near him. Along the belt, you can find a couple extra pouches. His holster's there for his pistol on his right thigh, and he's got some extra ammo clips over on the left-hand side. He's wearing combat boots and fatigues. The combat boots, you get detailed down to the laces, which is a nice extra touch. And you can see that he's got a nameplate above the upper right pocket and some kind of identification, or maybe it's it's a badge or something else, or possibly even a radio mic handset over on the left-hand side. So there's some nice extra details to the model itself that help it stand out or give it a little bit of character. Obviously, he'd fit into a game like All Things Zombie without a problem. You could even drop him into a modern Call of Cthulhu game or just a regular game or even a fantastic one of D20 Modern without a problem. So several uses for him. He didn't need that much in the way of cleaning, just a little bit of extra metal you can see under the grip of the pistol itself. There was a mold line that ran across his head, but he's wearing a do-rag, so that cleaned up pretty easily and quickly. And he looks like he'd paint up pretty quickly, so good model here. Next up, we have another in the expanding line of alien overlords, and this is a boss. Before we look at him in detail, here's all the other alien overlords that Reaper currently has out. And you can see there's an overlord with a pistol, there's one that's got a tracking device, there's one that's called an oppressor that has a rifle, and now we have the overlord boss. The boss is a single piece miniature. He's not carrying any weapons or doesn't have any equipment or anything that you can see. He's wearing a long robe that covers most of his body and he has a high collar that 
is covering the back side of his head, but like the other overlords or alien overlords, he's got that big bulbous brainy kind of head and he's pointing forward with his left hand at somebody that's probably due for a probing or some other nasty business like that. There was very little cleaning needed on the model. There were some very faint mold lines and just a couple of little bits of extra metal along the collar that needed to be cleaned. But one thing that I did have to fix on the model is when he came out of the blister, his pointing finger was pointing down, so had to get that back into proper shape, just pointing forward, so you'll need to be careful if that happens with yours. Uh, it's not like a big long sword or spear that's going to be bent in almost any blister you get. This one's probably less likely so, but just be careful if yours is, because the last thing you want to do is break his finger off. So, nice addition to the line of alien overlords that are coming out. I'd like to see some more with other laser or pulse rifles, like the one that we have already, and maybe one or two with a heavy weapon. So I like them. I think they'd make good units now that they're getting fleshed out into a sci-fi game, maybe like 5150 or something like that. Okay, let's get back to some fantasy figures for a minute. And here we have some dust scorpions from the Dark Heaven Legends line. In this blister, you get two scorpions, and they are far and away larger than what would be a normal scorpion, because that would be you know tiny compared to the size of a miniature. So these are certainly large scorpions. They're not giant scorpions like the one you see here that's in the Nefsakar army, but they're pretty darn big. Now, they're big enough to where I would feel comfortable using them as filler in a Tomb King's army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. You can drop them onto a 20mm base. They'll need a little bit of clipping or cleaning around the integrated base that the Scorpion comes on, but if you had a couple of these inside a big block or horde of skeleton spearmen, I think they would look really nice and add a little bit of flavor or uniqueness to one of your units. But if you didn't want to go that route, you could always use them as large scorpions in a fantasy game. You could even maybe paint them up purple or orange or some kind of funky color as giant irradiated scorpions in Gamma World. Here we have a Scourge Devil, and this figure comes in three pieces. The head and the right arm are cast separately from the rest of the figure. They come on a casting tab, so you'll need to clean them and clip them off. The head goes into place pretty easily up on the, the stump of his neck between the shoulders, and his right arm is carrying a large whip. It's a barbed whip that looks like it would hurt like heck if it hits you, and that goes right into a very easy joint down on the wrist. Like the alien overlord boss, he's pointing at whoever he's about to punish, and that finger has a possibility to get a little bit bent in the package, so just be careful with it if that happens to you. He didn't need a whole lot of cleaning. There were some mold lines, but he came together pretty quickly. For me, he's probably going to get dropped in as an alternate sergeant or leader type in my Darkspawn army, but as a devil, or if you wanted to, demon type, whichever, he'd fit fine into a D&D &D game or pretty much any fantasy game. By the time you watch this, we'll have just recently celebrated Thanksgiving here in the States, so it's appropriate for us to see some Thanksgiving mouselings as part of that expanding line. And here we have a pilgrim who's carrying a blunderbuss, and I think he's holding up his right paw, trying to say how or he means no harm to the Indian, or to be politically correct, the Native American that's bringing a giant acorn, or giant for him anyway, regular size for the rest of us, acorn to the feast. And then you also have the pilgrim's wife, I expect, who's got a bountiful cornucopia full of food over on her right hand side, and some pumpkins there over on the left. All of them are in appropriate pilgrim or Thanksgiving y kind of clothing, and in my mind, they're of greater use in a diorama or something fun like that than real in game use. But then we also have another batch of mouselings to take a look at right now, and these are more likely to be used in a fantasy RPG or something like that. Here we have a mouseling mage, archer, and warrior. Each one of them are single-piece miniatures. You see the mage has a little pipe in one hand, and he's carrying a staff that is topped with an acorn. Nice little touch there in his left hand. The archer has a little hooded cloak that he's wearing, and his quiver is actually an acorn. I'm not sure how he's getting his stubby little arm around there to grab the arrows. Anyway, the warrior has a little sword in his left hand and a shield made out of the top of an acorn in his right hand. So they're all very characterful. I just think you have to have a very specific game in mind to use them for. Alright everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV. See you next time.